All right. So if we have a complex number of norm one, we want to compute this weird looking thing. Um, and this is a fantastic exercise because it really shows you how if you think about things um, differently and particularly visually, then you can reduce a lot of computations, um, especially in analysis and especially in this course where a lot of the stuff that we're doing is on R or in the complex plane, places where you can actually visualize what's going on and actually are able to draw a picture. Whereas in like multiple dimensions, it's harder to draw pictures because things are harder to draw when there are multiple dimensions. Anyways, okay, so one plus Z squared plus one minus Z squared. Okay, so what are these numbers? This is really, um, so the way I like to think of this is now this thing we can multiply uh, it by one and one is the same thing as negative one squared so this is basically um, negative one minus z squared right because you could just factor out a minus one here and that wouldn't affect it at all so plus one minus z squared Okay, so now what's going on here? What, what's happening is we're taking a number, so this is r and this is the imaginary axis, ir. So we're taking a number on the uh, complex plane here um, that has norm one, meaning that it lies on this circle. And here, what is this? Well the way you want to think about absolute value signs is that it's a if you have an absolute value of one thing minus another thing that's discussing difference anytime you see like this like this should immediately scream um uh distance to you and similarly this so this part you can uh think oh so that's the distance uh, between 1 and z because that's what happens when you subtract two things and just slap a absolute value sign on the n or a norm or whatever. It's just the distance. So the reason I introduced this negative 1 here was to make this look like a distance. Okay, so now what is this? This first thing is the distance between the point negative 1 and z. So this is z and this distance here, well it's distance squared. So it's this, so if we have, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Okay, every, things were good, but now they're, no, things, things were bad, but now they're good forever. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so now we draw a straight line through these things, and this is the distance between negative one and z. And so let's call this, I don't know, a for some reason, which will become apparent soon, if it has not already. So now this thing, what is this? This is the distance between z and one. So, well, the distance between z and one squared. So this is b. Okay, and let's, I don't know, let's call this, uh, this thing here c. Okay, so what do we have? We have a triangle here. And we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Because that's the Pythagorean theorem. And a squared is this entire thing here because we have the distance squared. And b squared is this thing. And so what this is equal to is it's equal to c squared, which what is c? c is the distance between negative one and one. So it's the distance between negative one and one squared. Um, and so that's negative two squared, which is four. And that's it. Um, no matter what complex number you choose, this, this thing is always going to be equal to four. And again, this is just a really fantastic exercise because as soon as you draw this picture here and see the triangle on the inside, 
you should immediately be able to understand the proof. And furthermore, like you could go through and write, okay, well, 1 plus z squared with x1 plus z times 1 plus z bar, and then go through and like actually compute what this is and multiply it out, and you will get 4 um, somehow. I'm guessing maybe you'll have some cancellation between the z's. I don't know. But you could go through a really complicated computation or just a somewhat tedious computation and find this solution. Or you could just look at the picture. Um, so yeah, I think this is a really good exercise, and here's the solution.